All right, we have another build completed here. This is a Ryzen 7 3700X build. I do these builds a lot. Uh, I bounce between the five and the seven most often. And this build was basically designed for somebody that wanted a PC that could run their programs effectively. Uh, they weren't doing any video editing or anything like that, but they just they were sick of a uh, basically a two core four thread, I believe. Maybe it was four core four thread uh, laptop that just was. Uh, always struggling to keep up it has 12 gigabytes of ram and they had the budget so we upgraded them to this and uh we did use the graphics card of choice was the 5500 xt they weren't necessarily getting this to game but they they do game on occasion and so we wanted to make sure we got them a, a card that would run great uh for you know just the average gamer that's a the 5500 xt is a fantastic card so that's what this build is ryzen 7 3700x we put 500 gigabytes of storage in there plus a hard drive and uh, B550M motherboard again, which is a pretty darn good motherboard. Uh, the fans around, what's interesting is that we have two sets of RGB in here. We have the uh, fans that are on their own system with the controller, and then the uh, AMD fan is actually controlled by the MSI Dragon Center, which is a motherboard app on the computer. So you kind of have to finagle those two things. That's fine, but let me show you the price, and then we'll get into the build video, because uh, I want to be honest about the price. When you are looking at prices for computers, uh, you're going to see a lot of people talk about how this is a $1,000 PC, $1,100 PC, etc. You almost always, what they're talking about is the part cost before tax and before anything else on top of it. So if we're going to be honest with this build, it's actually a $1,060 to $70 build. And uh, you can see the price breakdown here, just general prices for what I was able to get these parts out at the time. And granted, yes, there are deals where you get discounts or uh you know, different prices on occasion, but this is how it priced down for me. Uh, I like Amazon's, uh, Amazon has a really good set of power supplies from Apivia that are 80 plus bronze, which is great efficiency. It's fine efficiency. And they get up to the 800 to $1,000, 1000 watt power. So this is our build. I really like building the H510. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, we went with 32 gigabytes of Ram, uh, because they might do some video editing and things like that. They want to make sure that they don't have any slowdown from their memory. So that's why you see this price down here. Now, in the description, I am going to describe this build as more of a $1,000 PC because most of you are probably going to be running with, I want to be on, like, let's take off this two terabyte of storage. Storage is kind of whatever you want. My base is always 500 gigabytes. So when you see the description, it's saying it's a $1,000 PC, but in this case, obviously they paid around 1067. So just keep that in mind, but that's mainly because they got two terabytes of storage. So let's get on to the build video, and if there's any questions, leave them in the comments. Okay, for this build, we're going to start with the motherboard. And as you already probably can guess, we start with the RAM. This is 32 gigabytes of RAM that are just basically put into the two slots that are indicated on the motherboard right here, where it's asking me to... Hang on, let me get it zoomed in. You can see right here it's saying... Uh, let me see if I can get you better. There we go. Where to put it in first for the memory channels two and one. So I just put in that order so that the, uh, it'll basically make sure that the memory channels from the motherboard from the RAM is going to the two memory channels on the CPU that's going to be plotted here. Now what you can't see is I've already put my M.2 right in underneath this heatsink. If I pop this off, you'll see the M.2 drive in there. It's 500 gigabytes. We're going to plug in the hard drive later to one of the SATA ports over here on the side. Uh, now what though we need to do is put the Ryzen chip, as you can see here, the Ryzen 7 3700X. This is gonna go right onto your motherboard right here. And we're gonna put it in this way, going down, because if you see on the bottom left-hand corner right there, there's a little gold triangle, and that actually coincides with the gold triangle right there on the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm literally gonna drop that in, and I'm going to uh, bring that arm down, and it's gonna have a brain. So we're gonna to get to that point. Chip is in, dropping the arm, chip is locked. And now I'm gonna get the cooler right on top. I'm going to leave these actually on here, these two things. The Ryzen 7 comes with the cooler that latches onto the sides here, and it's an RGB cooler, which is really nice as well. So we're going to get that on, latch it onto the sides, and uh, plug that in as well. So it's on, it's plugged into the fan header in the back right here, it's plugged in, and I have the RGB connector thingy right here ready to be plugged in once I get it into the case. Okay, so now you can see everything's on the motherboard. Uh, you're basically ready to go. There's a few things I'm gonna, I'm gonna do before I put it into the case, and I'm gonna do something a little bit unconventional. I'm gonna put the graphics card on first right now because I actually wanna see if this will actually post to Windows. I'm gonna install Windows, update your BIOS, do all of that first, 
and then once um, uh, once that's done, I'll just pop it in the case so that when I get your power supply, it's gonna come tomorrow, I can just basically plug that in, you're good to go. I'm gonna use this basic 550 watt power supply that I have here to get this going and run a few tests, but uh, once I know this is going good, I'll just plop it in the case and we'll get the power supply ready to go. The location for the graphics card is actually right here. This is the PCIe uh, 4.0 times 16 slot. And with the B550M motherboard, these are running at times four speeds, which is what this graphics card running, is running at. So let me just pop this in here. Oh, I gotta take out the back one second. Can I just say I love this top plate? I love it when they have a top plate on top. It hides kind of the gnarliness of the tops of the graphics card and gives it a nice little heat sink on it. All right, anyway, I'm gonna just plop this in the middle here. There we go. And let me scoot this off a little bit so it can actually hang off the edge. Apply some pressure. And now it is in. It's locked in there, let me show you. Yep, that's all it is. It's just locked on in. So obviously it's not super stable, which is fine. I'm not going to be moving this anywhere. But once it gets in the case, it's going to get stabilized right here by getting um, screwed down. And But right now, it's like I, if I wanted to, I could pick it up with that, but I'm not going to. I don't want to break anything. So now I'm going to just give this motherboard power, and I'm going to short the motherboard to get it started, and let's get insta Windows installed on that uh, drive. Okay, so I basically have everything set up. I, I uh, plugged in the 24-pin over here. I plugged in the 8-pin up top in the top left, and I plugged in the PCI. This is obviously a test bench. Uh, I try to keep everything on a static-free surface, and I keep this on top of the case. And right now, right now I'm going to make sure that this is turned on, which it is. Everything's plugged in, and I'm going to do an initial post just by shortening the, uh, the power here, which is right down here. Let's see how this goes here. I'm oh, sorry, I was touching the wrong one. There we go. I just touched the uh, LED, uh, sorry, the power switch right here, the, right here with my screwdriver. That's all I need to do. You can see it's working. Everything's running. Uh, the fan's running. The graphics card's running. And I have the HDMI plugged into. Ooh, I don't have it plugged in. Dang it. I gotta plug the HDMI into the back of the graphics card real quick. That way we'll post it and edit the BIOS. All right. So I fixed my mistake. I plugged this into the uh, graphics card, the 5500 XT. It is running. And now you can see on the screen, Ryzen 7 3700X is recognizing 32 gigabits of memory. It's running at the slower speeds right now. These speeds for this, I believe, are 3600 megahertz. So we'll fix that in the BIOS after we update it. So let's go ahead and press F1 and let's get into the BIOS. Here is the BIOS. So um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna plug in my USB that has the BIOS update on it. You just basically download it from MSI's website. It's on the MSI B550 motherboard. So I'm gonna go to the uh, right here, this M flash mode once I get it in there, and then I'll come back and I'll change the memory and make sure it's going as fast as I need it to go. So let me first go into M flash and get this BIOS updated. Okay, so you can see here is our most current BIOS. It's the June 4th one uh, with the version of 0 .200, whatever that is. So I'm gonna, I put, I took the most recent one in September and put it onto my flash drive. So we're gonna go at M flash. It's gonna say, go to enter flash mode and say yes. Okay, and in flash mode, um, it's going to tell you down here again the version of the BIOS you're running. And it's also going to bring up the, you know, the data that you have on your drive. And you basically need to find on there where you put the BIOS update, which I know I put it under the B550M BIOS update right there. And it uh, down here it'll say it'll find the selected BIOS for you. And I'm, I'm obviously going to update to 2.41, made on the 29th of September. I'm going to press enter to select it. And I'm going to say, yep, we're going to update it. Okay, so now I'm just going to sit and wait for this to update. It takes actually probably about 10 minutes, to be honest. So I'm going to let this finish updating. I'm going to update the memory to be the fastest speed as you have it on here. And then we'll get Windows installed. Okay, the BIOS is now updated. We just ran the M flash and just rebooted. And we're running the most recent BIOS. And now I'm going to come over here and look at the memory, 2133 megahertz. I'm going to come down to memory and basically just call that over here on the right. It's telling me that I can run at 3600 megahertz. So I'm gonna come up here at, at XMP Profile 1. I'm gonna tell the, the BIOS to go to XMP Profile 1. I'm gonna X out of it and save it. And now we're gonna be running to that speed and that's literally all I need to do in the BIOS. And now we're gonna update. Um, when it turns back on, we're gonna to check to make sure it's running right. And then we're gonna put in our Windows installer, which is right down here. I just downloaded it to a USB. I'm gonna plug this in here and it's gonna boot up from this installer. And we're gonna install Windows. 
All right, it's looking good at 360, 3600 megahertz. I'm plugging in the USB, rebooting, and let's get Windows installed. All right, so I'm gonna just follow the prompts here. I wanna make sure you can see how I do this. The only drive I have connected to this is the M.2 drive um, because I only wanna install Windows on the M.2 drive and I don't want it to confuse with the uh, hard drive we got as well. So here we are, we don't have a product key. If you do wanna install, uh, sorry, if you do wanna activate Windows to get like Windows support and to be able to modify some things for like display settings uh, and like background and stuff like that, you can. But we're gonna install Windows 10 Home and we're gonna make sure that it knows what drive to install it to. And I wanna just show you that before I kind of get rid of all this boring stuff. All right, so we're gonna do a custom install because we're not um, doing any sort of upgrade, upgrade an old system. We're going to do a custom install and this is where it finds your your drive. It's finding the 500 gigabyte drive that's on there and we're gonna tell it to install it to that drive, which is a blank drive. I'm gonna say next, and now it's just installing. So once this gets installed, Windows is gonna pop up. I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna do uh, Windows updates. I'm gonna go to the MSI B550M Pro VDH website and download all the drivers that are applicable to you, get them all downloaded so that everything's running right. And uh, after that, I'll, maybe I'll test a couple games out to make sure we're doing pretty well. But that should be the extent of getting Windows installed, and then obviously it's getting that hard drive in there as well. And very quickly, you can see I'm running the Windows updates, and I went to the MSI website, and I downloaded the uh, most recent BIOS, so I can update that. Um, again, because I had some issues before, I think that uh, if I go back to a better one, it'd be better. I, let me show you what I did. I downloaded the uh, beta version, and had some issues, it just wasn't loading right. And so I went, I'm gonna go ahead and upload it to this one instead. I uh, went ahead and got all these drivers for you. I'm going to download those and install them. And then I got the manual that you're going to have on here as well. And I'm downloading this, what they call Dragon Center, uh, because this is going to control your RGB of your fan. So you have all that for you. All right, right now I have your case flipped upside down before I put everything in there because I want to install your hard drive. The way hard drives get installed in this is you have a cage like this that goes into the bottom of the case. You'll see it later when I get it upright. And how they work is you actually plug, put them in on, you have three spots for it. So you can add three hard drives if you had more 3.5 inch hard drives. And you even have on the back here two spots to put your SD cards, your, sorry, your solid state uh, drives. And on the bottom of the cage here, you actually could put more. So I'll show you that all in a second again. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here and your motherboard has little screws to screw this in so it's nice and sturdy. And that's what I'm gonna plug back into your case and connect with uh, the SATA cable and the SATA power cable to make sure it's good and going on your new computer. And there you see it down here all snug at the bottom of the case. So that's where it's going to go. This is, of course, the back of the case, and everything's going to be wired into the front from here. And I'm going to leave that without power on it until I get the motherboard in there uh, and I'll connect it. Because, again, I'm still working on the motherboard right here. I'm running some downloads and just playing with it. It's been running great. I'm going to test a couple games on it, but uh, because Windows is already installed and everything, once I just plug it in, I just got to format it, and then I'm good to go. All right, just to show you how I would uh, install this drive. This is completely unconventional, but because I don't have your power supply, I'm just formatting it now, so it's just plug and play. When I get your power supply, you can see here that now that I've already had Windows installed on this computer, I went ahead and put this here. I have your SATA connector to the motherboard going all the way here to the motherboard in, the, in one of the SATA connectors. And I have this here connected as giving it power to the power supply. This is going back to the power supply. And now over on the computer, I just simply type in uh, disk, and I'm going to go create and form it a hard disk. It's going to bring up your disk management, and this is the newer way to do it, the GPT, so I'm going to use that. And here I have disk zero unallocated, and uh, that's what it obviously automatically selected, recognizing that I needed to edit. So I'm going to say new simple volume, next, and I'm going to say do the entire volume size, and say next, and I'll give it a letter H for hard drive. How does that sound? Letter H. Next, and I'll call it uh, two terabyte hard drive. Next, and finish. So now you have that two terabyte hard drive and you'll see it in, oh, it says done. And you'll see it right in, let's see where would it be? This PC, here it is. So you have your C drive and then your two terabyte hard drive right there. That is completely empty, so you can start using that. That is how you, that's as easy as it is. So this computer is good to go. Um, I'm gonna uh, basically use these standoffs in here. You can see that down here it's telling me where to put your, hang on, where is it? Here it is. Uh, it's saying micro ATX is labeled with the U, so I basically put uh, these standoffs on the case at every U location. I put your input output shield over there that's gonna basically be the shield for all your input output ports, like your ethernet, your USB, etc. I'm seriously gonna just pick this guy up 
plop it in there and screw it down. And that is how easy it is to put this inside of there. And then of course I'll do some cable management for the front panel headers, but I'll do that in a, in a moment. And there you have it, it is in there, it is good, and I've attached all the front he panel headers. Let me show you. On the top here you have the power button, a USB button, a USB-C. I'm trying to get it focused, there we go, USB-C and the audio jack. And anyway, those all four of those link back to the front panel. So basically over here it tells you to put into your, your audio, that's where the audio goes. Uh, right here is where your front panel like uh, turn on button goes uh, that I was using before. This is the, uh, right here is the USB header, just plugs right in there. And then up here is the USB-C header, just plugs in right there. So, I mean, that's all it is. It's pretty straightforward. The motherboard manual tells you where to put it all. But here you can see I plugged in the hard drive cord again so that when we get your power supply, it's just plug it into the power on the back and turn this thing on and you're good to go. So now I'm going to just put the graphics card here by taking out the uh, side expansion slots here so that it's open. Plop that in there and boom, it's good to go. Yep, and there she is. All snug in there and... Uh, I'll start putting on the fans in a moment here, but uh, once they come, but I need the power supply and the fans, and we're good to go. Okay, we're up and running. All right, I mean, so I got the fans all in here, and just so you know how the fans work, these are bringing cold air in, these two fans here, and then these fans here, this is exhaust out, exhaust out. So we're just keeping the airflow coming in, and then, of course, flowing out that way. So that's how those work. Uh, how to put those in is different by case, so I just didn't feel like filming it. Now I did get the power supply installed. It's actually down here. I installed from the back of the case. And uh, what you'll notice is the fan side, the, the fan has a power has a top like that. And what you'll notice is that that fan is actually on the bottom of the case because down here, this little space here is where it's sucking in air to keep the power supply cool. And then of course all the cables are being routed to where they need to go to, to power everything. Your, your hard drive, your um, your motherboard, your PC, your, um, your graphics card, they're all powered up. It's actually quite simple to do and, uh, that will, you know, cable management is, and now we are up and running. So it's a great build and look forward to it and I hope you have a good time with it.